Hello, welcome to this new tutorial and now let's buy our ad coins. So as a reminder, we're now making a function so that we can get the buy ad coins action in my Ether wallet and exactly as what we just did for getting the equity and ad coins of an investor, we are going to make a new function here which we'll call buy ad coins and which this time will not return anything but will update three variables right after the investor buys some ad coins. And these three variables are first, the equity in ad coins of the investor, second, the equity in dollars of the investor, and third, the total ad coins bought, which is, I remind, the total number of ad coins that have been bought by the investors. Because indeed, as soon as an investor buys some ad coins, well, this variable is updated and it is increasing because some new ad coins were bought. All right, so buying ad coins, let's make this function and we start with function. Function, then we need to give a name to this function, which we'll call by add coins, very simply. And then this function will take actually two arguments this time. First, the address of the investor, because it's actually the investor that will call this function to buy some add coins. So we need to specify here the address of the investor, but keep in mind that address here is the type of the variable an investor is the name of the variable. So that's the first variable. And then the second variable will be, well, how much dollars the investor wants to spend to buy the ad coins. That is basically how many ad coins does he want to get, but with US dollars. So the second argument here will be the USD invested. But again, we need to specify the type just before the name of this variable. And the type of this variable is an unsigned integer you int and the investor is not going to spend billions of dollars to buy the ad coins so we can take the simple u int with 32 bytes so you int you as the invested we have our two arguments perfect now we're just going to specify exactly like before that our input variables are external because indeed these are not intrinsic to the contract and now guess what we have to do do we have to open some new brackets here no that's the trick. There is a tricky thing to do here. We must apply the modifier because remember, we need to check first if this investor here can buy the ad coins with the money he wants to invest. That is with his US dollars. And to check this, well, we'll of course apply our modifier. All right. And so now the question is, how do we apply this modifier here? How do we link it to this function? Well, that's exactly the next step here. Just before we open the brackets, we need to call our modifier here just this way, can buy at coins. So that's our modifier. Remember, we called it can buy at coins. And of course, we input what this modifier is expecting as argument, which is exactly the USD invested by the investor, which is already an existing variable of this function, because simply it is the argument of the buy at coins function. So what I can simply do here is just take this USD invested without taking the type because the type is just used when you declare a new variable, but this was already declared and therefore we just need to paste that here. USD invested and now we are allowed to start implementing the function. So pressing enter, I get my closing bracket and now we're definitely ready. Okay, so as I said at the beginning of this tutorial, this function is not going to return any value. It's just going to modify some variables. Remember, these are the equity in USD of the investor, the equity in ad coins, and the total ad coins bought. All right, so let's start with the equity in ad coins. So to update this equity in ad coins, well, simply we must increment, we must add to the current equity in at coins of our investor. So here I just took my mapping again. This is my mapping and this is the argument of the mapping, which is the address of the investor. So that basically gives me the equity in at coins of our investor here. And so that's exactly the variable that we need to update right now. And to update it, what I want to do is add to this equity in at coins. Well, the at coins, but by this investor, when he pays 
this amount of US dollars, that is this USD invested amount of dollars. And so what we exactly need to add to the equity in ad coins of the investor is this amount of ad coins this investor could get by spending this amount of USD invested. And so let's call this number of ad coins, ad coins, but, and now we are going to define exactly what this variable will be equal to, which is, of course, the USD invested by the investor, that is, the amount of money paid by the investor, times, remember, we have our USD to add coins conversion rate. The USD to add coin conversion rate allows us to go from USD to add coins. And therefore, since here our investor spent USD invested dollars, well, to get the number of ad coins this investor could buy with his dollars, we simply need to multiply this by this rate here, USD to add coins. And therefore, let's just take this USD to add coins, copy it, and let's paste that here so that we get our ad coins bot. And here, the equity in ad coins is well incremented. However, let's not forget that ad coins bot here is a new variable that wasn't declared anywhere before. And therefore, this is the first time we declare it here. And when you declare a new variable in Solidity, and that comes from C++, because Solidity was inspired from C++, well, we need to declare the type here, which is an unsigned integer. You int again, and there we go. Now to get rid of this, we simply need to add the semicolon. All right, and that updates our first variable the equity in ad coins of the investor. Now let's update the other variables. So the second one was the equity in dollars and the third one was the total ad coins bot. So let's start first with the equity in USD. So that's why I'm copying this because the equity in USD is simply the mapping equity USD taking the investor's argument, the investor address. So that gives us the equity in USD of the investor and now, how do we update the variable the right way after the investor buys the ad coins? Well, simply what we could do is update it this way. We can take our equity in ad coins of the investor, which is exactly this, and paste it here, and then divide it by the USD to ad coins conversion rate, that is 1,000. Because indeed, since $1 equals 1,000 ad coins, well, in order to convert your ad coins into dollars, you just need to divide your ad coins equity by 1000. And that's exactly what we just did here. All right. And let's not forget the semicolon. And there we go. We have our second variable updated. Good. Now let's update the third one. That is the total ad coins, but so try to guess how we have to update it. It's actually very simple. Well, very logically. The total ad coins bought is the total number of ad coins that have been bought by all the investors. Right now, we're dealing with one investor, which is this one. And therefore, right after this investor had bought his ad coins with this amount of dollars, well, that means that some new ad coins were bought. And this number of new ad coins bought is exactly what we got here with this variable ad coins bought. So that's why I'm selecting this and copying it because now I'm going to use it to update the total number of ad coins bought by the investors the following way by simply incrementing it by this number of ad coins bought by this specific investor. All right, we just add up some new ad coins that were just bought to the total number of ad coins that were bought by all the other investors. Great. Let's not forget the semicolon. And we are done with the function. The red flag just disappeared. All good we're ready to move on to the last final function of this implementation, which is the function that allows the buyback option, or in other words, allows us to buy the ad coins back. All right, so let's do this in the next tutorial, and then I guess we'll be ready for the demo. Until then, enjoy blockchains.